God is coming to you. To all of you. Even the most wretched. Jesus, banished from his hometown of Nazareth, was preaching an apocalyptic form of Judaism that he shared with John the Baptist. But at this point, Jesus was still at the start of his ministry, with only a few followers. Professor Helen Bond believes that while Jesus' preaching was popular, miracles would have been the real draw. I think it was probably Jesus' miracles rather than his preaching that attracted people at first. You know, I mean, it's, it's nice to go and listen to a man who has a nice message, but if a man can heal you, that's something really worth going out to, to hear. To modern readers of the Gospels, it might seem as though the ability to perform miracles would have set Jesus apart, but that wasn't the case. There were lots of other healers at the time wandering around, so why did Jesus stand out? I think what does seem to be different about him is the sheer volume of the healings. Um, the Gospels are full of not only healings of disease, but also exorcisms mm. of um, what were considered to be demonic spirits and um, mental health issues, we might say today. And also, of course, these nature miracles where he walks on water. And it's this commanding presence. It's the fact that he just speaks and, um, and demons come out of people, or people are healed. Satan! Leave him. To his followers, the miracles would have been clear proof of the message that Jesus had adapted from John the Baptist. The miracles in the New Testament, especially casting out of demons, has an apocalyptic significance for the Gospel writers. In the future kingdom of God, which is soon to arrive, there'll be no more evil. There'll be no more demons, there'll be no sickness, there'll be no death, and Jesus currently has the power over those things. Jesus has the powers of the end times now. For the Gospel writers, the miracles, the casting out of demons, these are apocalyptic events showing that the end will soon arrive.